I'm Dao, I'm a visual artist and the founder of the Dao Art Gallery, and this is the I Paint Ideas podcast where I give my art a voice and where I share stories about my art. Thanks so much for joining me. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, I invite you to do so so you don't miss any of the new stories coming up. Last week, I shared a bit about my diary collection. It's the collection of artwork where I turn personal experiences into art, and I talked about my painting If I Was a Wave, which is my self-portrait take on thinking about myself as a quantum object, which then properly exposed me as a nerd that I am. So I promised that today I would continue to discuss another painting from the diary collection that could also qualify as a self-portrait and really another way of looking at myself. And that's my painting called An Artist Trapped in Nerd's Mind. For as long as I can remember, I thought myself as an artist trapped in nerd's mind, and I would basically describe myself in that way to people. I'm an artist trapped in nerd's mind, desperately, desperately trying to escape, break through this logical candy coating and reach the escape velocity, only to be pulled back in time and time again. And it's pure magic when the artist escapes And no, it's not easy to live up there. I can tell you that right now. There are three things I love. Art, film, and technology. Well, actually, four things. And jiu-jitsu. But that is a topic for another day. Art because it's the truth. You can't hide from art. Even if you try, and you really, 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 really try, you can't do it. It's the truth. It's what it is. Whoever you are will come out on the canvas or whatever your medium is. Film, because truth be told, I was never satisfied with a static image of an oil painting. I always wanted to move the image. I wanted to give it past and present and future and spin it around and see it from different angles and turn it inside out and create an entire world around it. And then technology, of course, because it gives us the tools to create immersive experiences and art is an experience. The film, the storytelling, technology are all in service of creating that artistic expression and their art in and of themselves as well. I didn't go to art school. I studied math and computer science, hence the tech thing, and cinematography, hence the film thing, and now I paint ideas and have my own gallery. So go figure. Now, my mom asked me, why don't you go to art school? Like, to begin with, why don't you just go to art school? And what I told her, and looking back now, what would the art school teach me? What would the art school teach me? They can't teach me to be an artist. They can only teach me how to be a painter. A painter is not necessarily an artist. To me, an artist is a creator. An artist will find a way to innovate, to invent, to make their art come to life one way or another. For example, I created my own finger painting technique because I didn't know how to mix color or use a brush. So I found my own way to put paint on canvas and make it my own in that process. I know Billie Eilish and Phineas used the sound of an Australian crosswalk, if I'm not mistaken, in Bad Guy, I believe, because they (laughs) they can take things from the environment and turn it into an award-winning song. Same thing with Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. They used sugar packets instead of maracas. Dolly Parton used her fingernails to make music. So I think an artist will go through any obstacle. They will never use any excuse to create their art because they can make it any which way. They don't need an art school. They don't need proper supplies. They don't need to know how to mix colors. It's going to just happen because that's who they are. An artist will find a way to bring their art to life. A painter is skilled in recreating what's already there, right? You know how to do a particular technique because somebody else invented it and now you're going to learn it and then you're going to do it, but it's not going to be yours. To me, an artist is a creator and painter is a practitioner. And I'm just saying that because of the distinction in the t- in the terms of how I think of it. Not to say that the painter can be an artist. I'm only saying that 
I'm not a painter. I'm an artist. I don't know how to paint. I know how to create, if that makes sense. I also think that going to art school, in some cases, may take the edge off being original. And I base that on the observation of how much influence physics has on my art. Last week, I talked about the painting, If I Was a Wave, which is heavily influenced by physics, but it's not the only one. There is another painting that comes to mind in Jersnet, where the composition was based on Calabi-Yau manifold in 11 dimensions, which is like a, like a string theory thing. And I know how much influences I have on my art from different sources, right? So if I had gone to art school and been exposed to all these other ways to create, I think my art wouldn't be where it is today. And I don't think I would have liked that. I like to do my own thing and I try to be different. So I think it would take the edge off. I received the best advice from this assistant DP. And he said, put the film in the camera and go out and shoot. And of course, with technology now, it's a lot easier to do that. But I think for any creative, you just need to go do your thing. In doing that, you'll find your unique path and there's no school, there's nobody who can teach you that, whether it's fine art, writing, graphic design, illustrations, filmmaking, storytelling, fashion design, you just go out and do it. Not to quote Nike, but just go out and do it. It's the best way to find your own voice, your own path, your own technique, your own differentiator. And that's it. But I digress about the painting. An artist trapped in art's mind. I'll put a link uh, to all of the artwork in the show notes, as always, you can link to show notes from the description box of this episode, wherever you're listening. So make sure to check it out. So the artist trapped in Nerd's mind is an oil painting with a digital extension. As I mentioned last week, it's very rare nowadays for any of my physical oil paintings not to have these extensions. Sometimes it's another painting, analog painting, another oil painting. It may be a digital painting, maybe both. In some cases, it may be a video. In some cases, it may be a short story. In some cases, it may be a poem. Whatever is congruent with the original oil painting, it has to be congruent. Otherwise, why do it? In this case, I wanted to show the duality of how I feel about being an artist and being a nerd at the same time, being left and right-brained. I'm ambidextrous, so I can use both hands pretty much equally, although I do have preference for certain things using my left hand or using my right hand. But also zooming in and out from like seeing a big picture and diving into details, I can do that pretty much seamlessly. I can be creative and analytical at the same time. So there's this duality to me and it's always been there. And I try to capture that in this piece. I also wanted to incorporate these trends that I was talking about, putting art on continuum, creating digital extension, and also showing art's point of view, a point of view of inside of the painting. And I think this particular piece lends itself beautifully for that concept because it's an artist trapped inside of the nerd's mind. So I thought it was very congruent to do that in this case. The oil painting is the view from the outside in, and I call that the nerd's point of view. And then the digital extension is the view from inside out, which is the artist. Of course, the artist is trapped inside of the nerd's mind, right? So the nerd is represented by a shiny coating of black and white, sort of, you can think of it as containment field. It's logical, it's rational. There is a certain predictable rhythm to black and white in it. It's almost maintaining a status quo. Entire painting is rhythmic and algorithmic exchange of black and white, seemingly going on forever. You can very easily imagine that this would continue beyond the edges of the canvas, of the physical canvas. And it creates this barrier, a container, a wall, uh, a containment field that I mentioned before. That when you come to it, <laughs> you would kind of bang your head on it, right? On the inside is the artist trying to escape. And the artist is represented by vibrant colors, emotion, intention, creative uh, vision. And there's a reason why she wants to escape. There are things that she wants to do, things to create, people to see, places to go. 
but she's restrained with this containment field. So in the oil painting, you can see cracks in that shell throughout the whole piece. You see in places where the cracks are a little bit bigger, the colors coming through. And then that colorful light is breaking, breaking through the cracks, maybe even making those cracks bigger. And the oil painting is rather large, five feet by four feet. And for the most part, when you see it from a distance, this is very similar to If I Was a Wave as well. When you see it from a distance, it's a very uniform pattern of black and white. So you don't necessarily see the colors. You don't necessarily see the, the crackling in it. It's very subtle. But that's because... I always felt like I didn't have to broadcast to anybody that I'm an artist. It's who I am. It's what I do. I make a painting. People like it. I give it to them. And that was that. I never thought about gallery. I never thought about selling art. I didn't think about that. I just did it because I needed to do it. And then I would give them away. So that kind of translates into this subtle cracking and subtle color. So from the outside, you see a nerd, <laughs> like somebody who went and majored in math and computer science, right? Like you see that. And you don't see the color necessarily coming through until you get closer. Of course, very similar to if I was a wave. That's the same. It, it wasn't planned that way, but it just turned out to be that way, which is interesting because they're both kind of self-portrait. So it's very subtle on purpose. But when you get closer, you may wonder where are the colors coming from? Could this containment field stay intact or what would happen if it gives out because you can see it cracking in front of you? So on the inside is the artist and we see her in this digital extension piece. She's surrounded by vibrant colors, most notably cobalt blue, which is my favorite color. It's the color of the Pacific Ocean, three miles north of North Shore in Oahu. It's my favorite color of all time, forever and ever and ever, and it represents myself. So that's why you see a lot of blue. And the colors are intensely, and I mean intensely saturated. And then the digital profile image of myself is superimposed on the colorized version of the oil painting, the black and white oil painting is colorized, right? Super saturated. And then this digital profile image of myself is superimposed on it, moved all the way to the right edge, well, almost all the way to the right edge of the canvas facing out and looking up into the light, hopeful for the escape. You can imagine like if you're in a cave and you're trying to get out of the cave, right? Like <laughs> you're trapped in the cave and all of a sudden you see the opening and there is and there is fresh air and there is blue sky and you're like, ah, finally, light, right? And I thought it was very appropriate that she will be locked in this PNG file, a digital PNG file, like the nerd is like locking her up, right? It's a little cruel on my part, I have to admit, but she never loses hope that one day she will be free. And you can see that on her face. On the side note, that image of me superimposed was a cover of my short-lived 2014 podcast, Launch Voyeur. Uh, four weeks into it, my dad was diagnosed with lung cancer and I abandoned the project and took care of him. And then he passed away five months later. So it was a good decision on my part to just abandon that project. But for the cover, I had... My back painted as, as like a launch map. It was sort of an algorithm of a launch. And the photo was taken of me looking into the light in the door frame with the door cracked open. And it was kind of like a kind of Renaissance feel to it. And then the camera was capturing me from way back in a very voyeuristic sort of manner and um, came out pretty good. I'm usually not a fan of my pictures at all but it came out pretty good the the photographer the artist slash photographer that I hired was super talented and he did a fantastic job and so anyways after my dad passed away I just shelved it and um that was it you know I never thought about it for a long time until you know seven years later it turns out that it was absolutely perfect addition to this digital version of the artist trapped in her mind like it was it was like made for it but it wasn't right 
Like I, I don't know how to explain it. It was just something that happened. And, and then seven years later, it turns out it was absolutely perfect addition to this digital version for an artist trapped in art's mind, for the artist's perspective. I bring this up to tell you that nothing creative is ever wasted. Always keep copies of your creative work, even when nobody likes it, even when it seems like the biggest waste of time and the project didn't pan out the way you wanted, like in my case, or if it was criticized, whatever, just keep it because you never know when its time will come and it may come, you know, right? So like this painting, right? I didn't think about it seven years ago that I'm going to make a painting an artist trapped in nerd's mind, even though I describe myself that way from forever, from like grade school, I think. But you never know, right? So just keep your art, please. Please keep your art. That's a must, okay? One embellishment or modification that I made to the photograph to make it uh, look a little bit better and fit a little bit better with the texture of the oil painting is to make it look like you're seeing it through stained glass, and that really made a difference because the oil painting, the nerd side, is very textured. And then this also made the photograph very textured and they fit together much better. And of course, the nerd and the artist, in my mind, work perfectly together. So they had to fit. That was congruent. Except they're a diagonal mirror image of each other uh, when it comes to to using the oil painting as the background for the digital print, right? And what I mean by that is the way I did the digital extension, the digital print, is to take a photograph of the oil painting or the nerd's view, like the black and white one, and then not only mirror it, but also turn it upside down and then saturate the color, superimpose the the profile image, layer it all up, um, look it through stained glass, right? Because what that allowed me to do is to have them side by side in this natural continuation. So you go from the black and white into the colored one and it's seamless. And and that really turned out pretty good. Now, I didn't realize that, that I was doing it at the time because I just, it wasn't planned that, you know, I just did it and I play with it until I feel like it's good, you know. And that's, that's what I normally do. I don't think about it. I just do it. And I do it until it feels it's right. You know, the time stops. You get into the flow. And that's how it goes. The time flies when you're having fun. And I hope you had fun with me today. I have another diary collection piece that may qualify as a self-portrait called The Multipotentialite. I'll save that for next week. It's it's actually my favorite uh, to talk about uh, because I am the multipotentialite and uh, we're often misunderstood. So I'll tell you more about that next week. Stay tuned for that and make sure to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't done so already uh, so you don't miss it when it comes out. And of course, as always, thank you so much for joining and spending time with me today. I'm grateful for you and I'll see you next time.